Aloha, hi spa friends. Super excited today. We continue to do the high spa navigating together series post pandemic, the high five top questions. And today we have a great artist in uh, an expert in beauty and fashion, Mr. Rodney Cutler. So Rodney, why don't you tell us uh, what you're doing, what's going on and aloha. Oh, aloha. It's nice to see you. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. I, I wish I was doing it in person in Hawaii, but hey, I, I'm originally from Australia. Uh, I built my uh, career doing education, uh, salon work, and then moving into fashion. So I started Cutler, the brand, uh, early 2000s or late 90, uh, 98, I think it was. And then we, um, and then we, our goal was to really sort of uh, become an authority in fashion. It was interesting because at the time, celebrities were starting to grace the covers of magazines and the supermodel thing was ending. And uh, so when we started our company, as we all know, you know, you, you need to get PR, you need to have media attention. It was very difficult to compete in New York. And all the beauty editors would all, the first question I'd ask is, well, what celebrities do you do? You do? At that point, we didn't really do any. So I said, I'm going to do something that I'm passionate about. And that was to become an authority in fashion. And the reason was that it's really not about who we do, it's about what we do. And every year we would have two new creative stories and it would force us to reinvent ourselves. So, uh, oh my God, 20 years later, uh, we do 25, 30 shows a season. I think we've done a great job in becoming an authority. We've built great um, relationships with designers. It's also been a, a very a fantastic tool for our staff to sort of push themselves creatively and it's become a reason to come and work at Cutler. Uh, so it's been exciting and it's really had a, an interesting bounce back to the salon where now that beauty editors do come to us and they want to hear our voice, creative voice, and it's trickled back into the salon. Our, our guests are curious about what we're doing. They want to know what's fashionable. And, and then it's our job to then translate that into wearable looks from what we create on the runway to what we do in the salon through haircutting, styling and colour. So it's been a... You know, it's been an up and down journey, but generally it's been fantastic. We've got four salons today. We've got uh, well over 100 hairdressers uh, and it's been, it's amazing. I love it. I can't wait to get back to work. Oh, so talking about that, when is New York opening? So they, I, we are phase two. We, we thought we were going to open June 22nd. Uh, but now I think our mayor has pushed it back a week or two. We don't know, but we're 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 getting everything aligned. It's been a, it's been an amazing journey. I remember the first few weeks in March. You know, it didn't seem real, and we we I mean we we do 170 services on a Thursday and a Friday, and wow. even more on a Saturday. So it's you know with the biggest complaints we had in January was just it was chaotic and crazy. So I was like, oh, my God, this can't be happening. And when the NBA shut down, I think it was on the Wednesday, uh, uh, the second week of March or third week of March, um, it sort of suddenly struck and I was like, oh, this is going to happen. That was the hardest time for me was I had staff members saying, um, please don't shut. And then I had other members saying, this is ir irresponsible, we need to close. And that was – people have asked me what was the toughest time. It was like not knowing and and – once we were mandated, we, we shut before the mandate, but once it was mandated, it made it a little bit easier. Like the decisions made, you know, we put health before profit and um, and then we sort of went down to shutdown. Then it was that phonetic week or two, like, what are we going to do? And then what are we going to do with my time and start a new business and, and online education? And, and I was really proud of our staff about how positive they have been. I was like, we're just going to be positive. We're not going to get on these... You know, in social media, we've seen the best and the worst of people. So I was like, we're going to stay positive. I'm not going to get caught down that rabbit hole. And I'm really proud of the way we've handled ourselves and the staff. And uh, we've been in uh, communication quite a lot. And uh, so now we're ready. I think we're ready to come back. Oh, good, good, good. So that is a perfect segue to the questions, the high five questions that we have. And... So how will the new normal is going to change the way that you do business now? Look, I think 
when you're in your business, I, I feel like you produce and you gather. And when you're gathering information or education, sometimes you step away from producing. And if you're just producing all the time, just going to work and, and doing your clients, you, you're never stepping away and thinking about how we can do it better. So we have used this time, and I have personally used this time as a time to say, this is out of my control. So this is my gathering time to rethink, rethink about who I am as a person, as a, as an art, as a hairdresser, and also as a company. So as I said, our biggest complaints in January were like, I can't hear my client. It's too loud. There's no way to sit. People are waiting. So we now have to, we have no choice. We have 50% capacity going back. So it's going to be a different experience. Cutler has always been this very high fashion, crazy phonetic energy. It's not for everybody, but you felt like you were a part of something that was very cool. So culturally, we're going to change just by the experience that we offer. So I've said in our, all of our Zoom meetings, thank God for Zoom, right? <laughs> all of our Zoom meetings is that let's take the chance because the, the challenge that we had where it's too busy and crazy, now we can sort of rethink the experience. Culturally, it will feel different. So we're now doing shift work. We're going to go from two to, sorry, excuse me, eight till two, three till nine. So we're going to have 50% of the clients in the space at one time that will be perceived differently and i think it will be an opportunity for us to sort of um, recalibrate and get the things right with our business the hair was always fantastic but sometimes the service i know nobody does service better than you um but uh that was the thing where we were lacking so it's a real opportunity to rethink that good 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 uh well talking about service you know hawaii is so famous for the aloha spirit and of course, uh, around the world, everybody has incredible customer service. It's just uh, with different names. Mm -hmm. So would you, if you're having masks and if you're having uh, plastic shears and all that, do you think some of that customer service is not going to feel genuine? You can't see the person smiling or you still think we can do a good customer service? I, I think we absolutely can. And and I remember going to, um, you know, um, the Four Seasons in Hawaii many, many years ago. And, and I, I remember the, the, the attention of detail and, and the communication. And, and just the, the, the time where people take the time to really connect with you and ask questions. And so I think for us, it's going to, uh, um, it's going to um, require the setup. When the, it's going to start when we really book the appointment, even setting up the comfort level of like of the experience and setting the tone, setting the expectation. Even with our staff coming back, I'm creating much more flexibility. And we're pretty flexible anyway about the comfort, making sure that when people come back to work, they're comfortable. When the guest calls, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna do a temperature check. We're going to, uh, here's what the, the procedure is. There's no one in the waiting room. So I think if we set the expectation up front, I think we'll be totally fine. I have had more, in this time, I've had more conversations with my family. I've had more conversations with hairdressers that I respect and like that I don't normally have the time to talk to and more conversations um, with clients either through text. So there is, a, there is a desire and I think as an operator and whether, whether you're a, a spa expert or esthetician or a hairdresser, that having that connection with your guests is going to be absolutely critical because they're dying to come back and there's and i think that opportunity and i'm doing it all the time on text like hey coming back soon how are you doing um what what can i do with my hair in between to make make me get through it so there is the opportunity but it will look a little different i think our front desk is going to play a huge role in setting that up you know in in the beginning Definitely. Uh, so quick question, being the expert, not only in beauty and fashion, but you also own your own businesses, uh, you own your four salons. Uh, and salons uh, were ahead of the game on sanitation compared to other areas, in my opinion, yep. you know, because there are so many different uh, worries about diseases and, you know, salons have always been extra caution with the, uh, you know, the extra gear. Uh, but at the same time, we have heard that a once salons open, they are packed. People are going insane because they really want to get those grooming processes back. 
Do you foresee that you are going to be super busy or you're going to try to control it by only taking 50% of business? Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, the landlords have mortgages, we have rent, we have to generate similar amount of revenue. So we just need to, I think the key to this is flexibility. And just if you are agile as a company and flexible, you can make it work. And that's why we're doing it with our shift work. So I think that's absolutely critical. Um, with the, and, and what we've done is that let's assume that in our salon, you, you're touched by many people. The person who gives you the gown, somebody washes your hair, somebody cuts your hair, somebody, the same person who washes your hair might blow dry your hair. So we're gonna, we're gonna minimize the amount of people who touch you. So when you go to one guest, so what we will do, we will say, okay, if I'm gonna cut your hair, or let's say you're having color, if you're having color, the next guest comes in, their assistant, we have assistants, they may do the glaze or toner. Once they're handed over, the colors cannot come over and touch the client without sterilizing, disinfecting again. So now we may have a guest who says, I want one person to touch me, that's it. So then they're gonna book out that time for two hours rather than one hour. So that's the way we're gonna do it. I think the big thing is we've had fortunate, some of the Southern states have already started. So there's some great learnings from our friends in the industry. Uh, you know, some people weren't blow drying the first week. Right, right. Uh, one guest at a time, uh, no one else touching. All these little things are good learnings. I think we're, we're gonna learn a lot within the first few days, but I think the key is being agile, being flexible and adjusting. The other thing is too, over four weeks as phase three, phase four comes back, we're gonna have 75% capacity, I would assume, and then 100% eventually. But that's the way we're gonna do it. We're gonna try and avoid the amount of people who, who touch you. you know? And obviously, plexi in between, um, separation of stations, we're taking out every second chair to allow the six feet um, social distancing and so forth. Yeah, because some of your salons are quite big. We have 34 chairs in one salon. Wow. So you're actually going to be taking some of those chairs out? We're going to, well, we're going to, we're actually going to keep them in and use them as barriers and separation. Also, people could then sort of process there. But we're going to have all these dividers and so forth. But we're going to have 17 operators in the space at once. And we'll do 17 in from, from 8 till 2 and then 3 till 9. And then we'll have an hour break that we can sort of cleanse, sterilize, and get reset. And are you opening later or are you always open until 9 p.m.? We're opening later. And, and I had a great conversation with our educational leaders yesterday. So that was another thing. You know, one of the attractions of working for us is we have a lot of education. So the thought was to use mannequin heads. And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. So we were gonna, we were gonna create an education on a Monday when it's really quiet. And then we're like, that's fantastic. So, so I'm, I'm gonna pitch that to the assistants who say, if we do educate, because normally the educator gets in their hands in the hair, try this, goes to the next student. Well, we can't, we, if we can't touch multiple people. If we have mannequin heads and we have gloves on, then this could be uh, a solution. So oh, nice. I, I, think, I think the biggest thing I've learned through this moment, mm. it's okay to say, I don't know as a leader. And I think, you know, I've been on some advisory boards and some great stuff and some great Zoom meetings, some, um, some seminars and, and everybody sometimes comes out with like, you know, here's how we're going to do it. I've, I'm like, I don't know. And I've said that in all of our staff meetings. You know, the first thing you say, I'm going to feel comfortable with your permission for me to say, I don't know. Because if I don't know, it's okay. Now, the way I've looked at it is, there, is there's policy, which is set by the government, and I trust they have our best intentions. Um, and, you know, on a state level, you know, we have Governor Cuomo. Then we have, um, uh, and then we have our, our, our procedure. And that varies to every salon, every company, every culture. And you have to look at that. And then we have common sense. And, and I think if we put those three things in that order, like what do we have to do? Let's adapt it to our environment um, within each salon, which would not even each salon, but even each operator is going to perceive this very differently. And then let's get in together common sense. And if we do that, I think we can come up with a solution. But I always say the first thing is to say, with permission, I'm going to tell you when I don't know. Don't well, be freaked out by that. And these are such a unique times that 
the whole world is experiencing this at the same time. So a lot of, I don't know, is definitely for all of us. Yeah. Um, so uh, did you have to change, I'm assuming, are you doing like a pre-orientation or a warm welcome for your staff so they all understand what the big goal is? Uh, you bring in them all one day earlier so you can kind of review all your new policies. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we've been in contact, not bombardment, but we've, I, I'm an open book. So I've allowed people to call me whenever they want. Um, so we've had a lot. In, in fact, yesterday I've been making about over 100 calls in the last couple of days. What, what we've done, we've had a, some, some structural emails go out just about what's happening we're actually sending another one out this week just about what we know and again we thought we we're going to start on the 22nd that's going to change one of the biggest things we're going to do is we're going to have a staff hair day because we don't look our best my son cut my hair the other week so he did a good job but he's not the hairdresser so we're, we're actually going to have a staff hair day which i think is really oh, important. I love that. so that's we're all going to come in yeah and we're going to get a little pampering and mm -hmm. uh so we're going to have two days of that then we're having, we're having Zoom meetings. Just uh, we, we had a week of Zoom meetings a few weeks ago just to be like, where's everybody's, you know, just checking everybody's uh, temperature in terms of how they feel about coming back. Uh, then we've had individual phone calls. Then we, what, at some point we've got to just gather all the information or, and then say, okay, here's our, here's our policies and our procedure. Uh, and we're going to do that again. And then we're going to have a staff day. And we'll get our head. What better way to practice the new procedures with yourselves? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we, we have to wear a mask and a shield as opposed to some of the southern states that are just wearing masks. So, you know, each, each state is uh, different. And, you know... So you already bought all that equipment and you have it ready to go, huh? Yeah. I, so we, 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 we're going to provide a shield for everybody and that will be their shield. They have to uh, sanitize it after... Um, uh, each service, then they have their mask for the day, they'll get a new mask every day, and then we'll have masks for the staff. I would assume, oh, sorry, for the clients, I would assume they will already Bring come in with the mask. Yeah. yeah. Then we'll have gowns, we'll have disposable gowns, we'll have real gowns, uh, the cutler gowns. That's what and I was going to uh, ask you. You're going to be bringing a lot of gowns because, you know, in most of salons, you reuse uh, yep. some of these things and are you buying extra to just keep washing it or you have a few disposable ones? Yeah, we'll, we'll have both. Cause some people may say, I don't want one that's been washed. So disposable, they might not want one. And I, and that's okay as well. You know, um, and we'll do a temperature check at the door. If somebody wants to walk in, what mm -hmm. we'll do is that we'll say, what do you look for an appointment? Just wait here, we'll go in, we'll check if it's available, and then we'll go, yeah, I'm not worried about, new. some people are saying I don't want to do new guests. I don't why, I don't understand why a new guests would be Different. more concerning. Yeah, no, but you know, we just go through the same procedure. So you are uh, taking temperatures to your yep. employees and to your guests? Yep, non-contact temperatures, and in New York, every two weeks, it's mandated that you have to be tested for COVID-19. Oh, no way, they already started that. Yeah, so every two weeks. So I'm assuming we have to do it to start work and then we have to do it every two weeks to make sure that you're not positive. Wow. So uh, what advice do you have for our members as you're planning to reopen your business? You know, I, I think as business owners or uh, or even working with co-workers, even if you're not, it, it's, it's, it's a collaboration. I think if you just go in there and bulldoze it, uh, there's pushback. There's, you know, we... we what I've just said is, I've gathered all the information. Just be open, listen to your staff, listen to your coworkers. There'll be certain people who, who are concerned and you may think that's excessive, but that's where they're at. And I think we just have to engage it. What we've said is if you're not comfortable with our procedure, totally fine. Everybody's guaranteed their job back. But if they, if they want to come back two weeks later or they want to have a different shift or a different work in a different way or say, here's what we're doing, and um, uh, and we'll support you whether you're comfortable with that. We'll make any adjustments we can. But at the end of the day, we've got a lot of people to satisfy. So I think it's really about collaboration. I've never been that kind of owner where it's you know my way or the highway anyway. Mm -hmm. So and it works for us. And and you know embrace it. I, there is 
from what I've heard from all the salons that have opened, they are busier than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. Even with the 50% capacity, they're doing bigger revenues than they ever have. The clients are smiling. There's a couple who might put challenge, like, I don't want to wear a mask. Well, I'm sorry, you can't have your hair done today. So I just think it's about flexibility and engagement, engaging with your guests um, and then engaging with your coworkers or, or whether they're your staff or your coworkers. Great, great, great. And uh, I think you kind of mentioned a little bit, but I still want to ask you, what is the biggest lesson that you have learned during this time? Uh, nothing's guaranteed. You know, you, you, you just can't take things for granted. Yeah. I, I look, I, I'm, I'm a pretty positive person. I'm very grateful for what, what we've built collectively. It's taken 20 years uh, it, with, with everybody's input. And I, I just think, you know, you miss those little things. We all do, right? We miss that little, like, oh, I used to go to the coffee store or my morning run or whatever it was, you know? And um, so it, it, there's no guarantee to this. I, I, I did not see this coming. I, I, if you'd said to me we would be shut for three months, I'd think I've lost my whole business, you know, but we haven't. And, and you fight and you, you, you dig in and, and, uh, and you keep going, you know, in your own way, whether it's keeping your business open, closing it, doing business in a different way, you keep going. So it's taught me, I mean, it's, I already had that persistence, but it, you can get through these things. Uh, you've got to have a plan. You've got to be flexible, um, but don't take it for granted because, you know, true. we're pretty lucky what we do, right? Yes, so true. And the fifth question is, what have you been doing to stay mentally, emotionally, and physically well during this time? So what we did was uh, I asked all the staff. So, I, you know, it's funny. I said to one of, our, one of my partners, I said, he was cooking one. I said, can you make a video of you cooking? And he said, yeah. He said, well, I'm going to do my wife's colour. I said, great. I said, I want you to, and he's not a colourist. So he puts a colour on, he's cooking a meal. I said, I just want you to make a video of uh, uh, cooking and do it while your wife's hair colour was on. So then all the staff, I just said, hey, let's just start making great little videos. So it was, you know, cutler, cutler and uh, cooking, cutler and, and creating. So somebody made a birdcage and I'm, I'm not good at it. I can't cook. So I was like, I'm going to go for a long run. So I went and ran... Uh, I think it was 30, 32 miles that day and I made a little video. So we, that's what we did on our social media was to sort of make it more fun, not as much pressure about like, you know, we've got to put out these creative messages and keep it going. It's like, let's, the other thing which I thought was interesting is that a lot of the staff I spoke to were like, I've never taken any time off. And I was like, enjoy it. Enjoy your time at home. Hopefully this is not going to happen again. So you're not going to get this opportunity. So, so yes, you can, create a plan, but, but if it's out of your control, enjoy it. So I was really, you know, what I do, I like to run. So I've been running a lot, riding, and I'm training for an Ironman in September. So I was like, it's about time I lost a few pounds. And uh, I think we all gained. <laughs> I'm training. <laughs> uh, so you, you have two boys, right? How old are they? They have just turned 17. Oh, my goodness. It's yes. been a long time. I, I, I think I heard today, someone said, they don't have, because they were going to take their driver's license. And I heard that you don't have to now. If you turn 17, because it's not available. So I, 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 that's when I get out here, I'm really like, guys, check and see. You might actually just get your license, which just scares me that they'll be allowed on the road without actually going through a test. Oh, no way. <laughs> Automatically? <laughs> well, that's what I heard. That's what I heard this morning, but I could be wrong. I'll, I'll check. <laughs> don't take my word for that. They grow fast. And, uh, and you still working with uh, being an ambassador for Redkin? I am. We've been, uh, my God, it's been 20 years. It's, oh, is it 20 years? Close to, yeah. It's been fantastic. You started um, when you were 12. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a great ride. They've just been, you know, for me, partnerships with um, product manufacturers, it, 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 it's they're all coming in all different shapes and sizes. What was great was that they really supported our creative initiatives. You know, I love their product. I love their education platform and it's just been fantastic. And it's just, it's just you know, we wouldn't be where we, we are without them. And that's what you look for when you, you know, we, we always did creative things and they've supported it. And it's been a fantastic journey partnering us at Fashion Week and, and also in the salon world. So it's been awesome. So this is kind of my last question, but it is more of uh, 
So when you have multi locations, because uh, I had the pleasure to work for Aveda many, many moons ago, and having multi locations is not very easy. You know, you're trying to keep your brand uh, and standards going consistent between all the uh, properties. How do you do it? So it's a great question. You know, when you look at, you know, like a Starbucks that, you, you know, I, for me, I go there because I know what I'm going to get, no matter where I am. So there's, there's that part where you're like, you look at a brand, the brand equity, and it gives you a certain expectation on what you're going to get. The flip side of that is that should every location be like every other location in your organization? Yes, no. So we, when we opened in Miami, the problem was that we tried to bring New York to Miami. And, yeah. um, it worked, but it, it didn't work as well as it could have. So now that we've opened in Brooklyn, we've really said, even the start, even the, the hairdresser, because remember at the end of the day, you've got the brand and then you've got the hairdresser and the true relationship, once they get in the chair between the hairdresser, I don't care about what the brand says, it's who's cutting my hair and do we connect? Um, do we connect um, on a personal level and also um, from a creative perspective? Are they giving me a heck of a one? So we have now, we celebrate the individuality of each store. They look different slightly to represent and to connect with the neighborhood, but also fit into our umbrella. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you Mr. Entrepreneur, you know, how to build a thousand hair salons, but that's just the way we have done it. So it works for us. So we want to be individual, but also have some brand standards and also an expectation. We do hope that they see the name and they go, oh, wow, that's quality. But it's different. It's a different experience, different hairdresser who's doing the hair on Fifth Avenue, um, 58th Street, where we are now, to Brooklyn. And I think that's important because at the end of the day, it's one guest having their hair done by a hairdresser. No, you're definitely right. I think there are some brands, like you mentioned, a Starbucks or a McDonald's, where it doesn't matter if it is in China or it is in the other side of the world, you expect that a drink or a burger to be identical. And uh, however, I know high-end brands, hotels, used to have a heck of a time when people get up, they didn't know where they were. They want to experience the culture. They want to make sure that they're part of it. And if you cookie cutter a resort everywhere, uh, so they start customizing and inviting the host culture to come in. And still they have the customer service brand, you know, and, uh, but it was unique, you know, it was different in each location. Well, and that's what's amazing about the Four Seasons, right? Where they, you know, there's a certain level of quality, but they're all different experiences. But I'm your worst nightmare because I know you're such a great educator and trainer of standards. Could you imagine for our company, you'd be like, oh my God, he's all over the place. So I get that <laughs> I'm not helping your cause with the, the standardizing the training, but I still think you can have both. I think, well, I think, I think for... Um but for all of us that they run spas and at the same time we always run salons, um, I think the salons are really hard for us because uh, uh, when you put a uniform to a very <clears throat> creative person and you load them up with all these rules and standards, is uh, it's almost like you're chopping their wings, you know, and you're trying to make sure you don't have a steel magnolia uh, salon in your hotel, high-end hotel, but at the same time, you want to make sure that this individual feel creative and it doesn't show up with uh, rhinestones in their eyelashes and, right. you know, tattoos all over their face. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's tricky. And, you know, I remember we had the opportunity, we were looking for a new space on Fifth Avenue and at a, an old famous hotel, it was a Sherry Netherland. And, and, and we would right down to the wire and we were, the, there were, I think there was 18 entrepreneurs who went for it. We got down to two and the person said, you just got stuff, too many of your staff have tattoos. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. and I really wanted it. And they didn't go with us. And then I was like, it was probably a blessing in disguise. <laughs> but it was interesting how people perceive things differently. And, and, you know, I could have 
said, put on sleeves, long sleeves and blah, blah, blah. But I was like, ultimately, I think being, an, you've got to be true to what you're passionate about and you believe in. And yeah. you've got to adjust and, and you can't just have it your own way all the time. But it's probably a blessing in disguise. I think it's so <laughs> Right now it's softening up. I think people yes. are way more open. You know, I see a lot of these strict policies where you don't have to have a beer. Now you can have a beer where you can have some more jewelry or some, you know, some strange colors of hair where before we were very, very strict about things like that. Well, and in, and in our head, you know, I think having, you know, 50 people who look like me and dress like me and do hair like me would be a pretty boring company, right? Like, so, you, you know, it's all about next generation, do yeah. it better. And, and so I, 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 the one thing about cutlery is I've always, always, I want individuality. I've, I've always, I want, I want people to build their own career path, you know, and, um, and mm. have that flexibility, but also be themselves creatively because, you know, we don't need 50 of me. That's right. Well, we do. We do. What about Fashion Week? When do you think that will start again? Well, February was tough, right? There was, first of all, there was restrictions. So, you know, we, we, there's yeah, a lot happened. of, yeah, it did happen, but it, it was, it was, it was a battle. You know, we, 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 we did half of the shows we normally did. Financially, people were already concerned. Um, and there was restrictions. You know, we, we actually did a lot of designers in the past few seasons from China. So there was already those restrictions coming in. And uh, we had one Chinese designer, Tao Rei Wang, who, who I love working with. Her team couldn't come because they, they were coming from China. But she was still, she lives in, in uh, the UK. So she actually came and did have to build a team um, the show was absolutely beautiful. We did this beautiful French twist. It was spectacular. Clothes were always amazing. We weren't sure how it went. So September, I have no idea. I, I, I don't know. Oh, well, we'll see. But maybe there's an opportunity to reset that too because over the last few years, we were at Bryant Park and then we went to Lincoln Centre and then we went downtown and now it's scattered all over. We've been at Spring Studios the last few years. I think it's probably a chance to re reinvent it anyway. Why not? Why, Why not? not? Yeah. Well, this, that was the last question. Thank you so very much for, um, you know, participating in our high spa association. Uh, we're very excited uh, with all our members every week. We've been in touch with them because most of us are in furlough, including myself. And we're definitely enjoying to stay home a little bit and kind of do the things that you were saying. Our companies are doing a great job staying connected with us, but they also don't know what's going on, right. you know? So we are dealing with a lot of quarantines and a lot of safety um, precautions. We're getting ready to open little by little. So they are saying that it's okay now to open uh, hair salons and restaurants. So You're in phase two? Are you, are you, are you, is there phases? Yeah. Yeah, so it's very excited. A couple of days ago, I got my first cocktail outside. <laughs> That's great. I went to Paella. I don't know if you've been in Maui or not. I have not been in Maui. I know you say you were at the Big Island. The Big Island, yes. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, yes. So the next, the next interview has to be on the island, right? Okay. <laughs> One of the islands. Sounds like a plan. So thank you so very much. And it's so nice to see you. It's been a while since the uh, three, four years ago, I think, yeah. when we were in that wellness uh, panel. Yeah, that's right. That was for um, well, it was Esquire and County Country, I think. In Arizona, yeah. right? It's a so, Billmore. So I truly awesome. enjoyed uh, uh, getting to know you that day. Yes. Well, stay safe. And uh, it's great. And I, I, uh, good luck with the, the reopening. And we'll, we'll, it's a community, it's a beauty community. I think uh, we'll all get through it. Well, thank you so much.